Raiders stood for bone-jarring defensive hits. A big play offense. And the ability to steal last-minute wins. An attitude that made the silver and black infamous in its playing style and dominant on the playing field. In 1982, the Raiders moved to Los Angeles. The brashness, toughness, and cockiness disappeared as the L.A. Raiders struggled for an identity and wins. Now back in Oakland, the Raiders are playing with a reborn spirit as the silver and black are looking like a team with championship qualities. Tonight, they face the New York Jets on TNT. First night of October in the New Jersey, New York area. 60 degrees and clear. We are at the Meadowlands for the Oakland Raiders and the New York Jets in an AFC encounter. Oakland comes in with a 3-1 and one record. And the Jets still looking for their second victory. They come in with a 1-3 mark. Good evening, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist, along with Pat Hayden. This is a homecoming of sorts for Jeff Hostetler, the Raider quarterback. He, of course, played here in New York for nine years. Things have changed for him in Oakland this year. Yeah, nobody appreciates this new Raider offense more than Jeff Hostetler because the last couple of years, he has taken a beating holding the ball in the pocket and waiting to get that ball downfield. And, you know, he is throwing a lot quicker rhythm type of passes. And this is a very talented offensive team, a team that can go all the way and win it all. And Jeff Hostetler said to us, last night you know this game's important he says we have to prove that we can go coast to coast and beat a team we should uh, beat and he also said hey, our offense is absolutely waiting to explode he hopes tonight's the night pat we were talking with mike white last night the new coach at oakland he said a little bit too much has been made about the changes in offense but they certainly demonstrably are spreading the ball around well tim brown was the featured guy for so long but they really are spreading around they've done that the last four games as a matter of fact in each of their four games this year a different wide receiver has led them or a different receiver williams in week one Ismail in week two, Brown in week three, and Hobbs in week three. I think this makes them a more difficult team to defend, Vern, and I think it gets everybody involved. I think you play better, and I think you practice better if everybody's involved. The Raiders, whether in Oakland or Los Angeles, have a well-deserved reputation as a haven for those in need of a second chance. They have in Pat Swilling, one of those young men. Well, after two very unhappy years in Detroit, he's come here, and his career has been resurrected. He said, you know, they're just letting me do what I do best, and that's putting pressure on the quarterback. Three sacks a week ago, and he is is putting pressure on the quarterbacks but burn the jets tonight want to run at pat swilling they think they can line a tight up tight end over him and run the ball right at him don silvestri will kick off to start the game that's a dandy kickoff but it will be returned napoleon kaufman has it at the two back he comes to the 20 he's got some room down the near side and is knocked out of bounds all the way out to the 42 yard line by victor green Jeff Hostetler, nine years. He wore the New York Giants uniform in a battle with Phil Sims here. Finally went out to Oakland or Los Angeles, and this is his first trip back. And, Bert, I think he is a good match for the Raiders. The best match at quarterback since Ken Stabler. First and 10 at the 42. Williams in a slot to the left. Hostetler on a line finds Tim Brown. That's a first down across the 50 on the first down play. Tim Brown with the catch. Ismail and Brown are the wide receivers. Andrew Glover gets the start at tight end tonight. Harvey Williams and Derek Fenner in the backfield. The offensive line was Newski Turk playing in place of the injured Don Mosbar. Kevin Gogan, a former Cowboy. Robert Jenkins and Skrep Skrepanik are the two tackles. It's a huge offensive line, though not quite as big as that of the Dallas Cowboys. First and 10 from the 46. Harvey Williams searches at right tackle. He's caught and dropped at the 45-yard line. Defensively for the Jets, and this is a patchwork defensive line. Donald Evans injured and out. They've changed everybody around. Howard Washington, Tony Casillas, his first start since back surgery, and Matt Brock. The linebackers in the middle, Mo Lewis, naturally a weak side linebacker, but Marvin Jones is injured at that middle spot. And there's Vance Joseph. He was a backup quarterback a year ago tonight to Cordell Stewart at the University of Colorado. Second down and nine. 
one with the tight end in motion. Hostetler going deep and has a man open, and he overthrows Derek Fenner. Oh, boy. Did he have him open for a touch? Clear confusion by the Jet defensive secondary and Derek Fenner, who has been a, a surprise for the Raiders, particularly as a receiver, comes wide open down the sideline. He's out of the backfield, the left part of the screen. Got him matched up on a on a linebacker, Bobby Houston, and had him beaten by 10 yards, and that's one, you, you gotta, those are the plays you have to make. I mean, they say they're waiting, waiting to explode. Those are the kind of plays you have to make. Darrell Hobbs, who had a big week last week with those seven catches, is on the field right now. Third wide receiver. Three down, three down. Yep. And this one is behind Fenner, incomplete. One thing on a free down, I, I always think you need to go deep. Throw the ball downfield. I mean, you, you know you have them off sides, and it's a freebie. You got speed on the outside. Throw it up there and let uh, the rocket or somebody have, uh, get after it. Offside. 97 defense, five yards, still third down. Gordon McCarter, the referee. They brought their calculators with them this week to the count to 11. <laughs> he still has something in his top left pocket. Did you see that? I don't <laughs> think it's the Bill Cowher's uh, film, but it's something in that pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it may be Bill Cowher's name and address. And those of you who weren't uh, aware last week, Bill Cowher, of course, this is the officiating crew that uh, counted 12 men on a botched field goal and gave Minnesota a second chance. I know Warren Moon is in our studio smiling at that right now. Third down after the offside. Here's Hostetler back. Pressure coming. They got him. Hugh Douglas, one of the two first-round draft point picks. That is his fifth sack already this season. Yeah, and the 15th sack for the Jets this season. One thing the Jets have done is play pretty good defense and put pressure on the quarterback. He just disposes of his guy. Talk about you, Douglas, number 99. He is a situational pass rusher. He's done a great job of it this year. Here's Jeff Gossett on the punt. Fair catch called at the seven-yard line by Dexter Carter. That's inside that area where one normally allows it to bounce in hopes that it goes into the end zone. The New York Jets take over at their own seven. You look from behind, Boomer Esiason. And the New York Jet offense. Adrian Morrell is starting at one of the running back spots tonight. The Jets are saying it uh, is his first start ever in his third year. Technically, he was in for the first play last week in the loss to Atlanta because they called the ace formation. But Adrian Morrell is the running back with Brad Baxter behind Esiason. That's Charles Wilson in motion. Morrell gets it. Nice start. Eddie Anderson with the tackle. Eddie Morrell, or rather Adrian Morrell, and Brad Baxter in the backfield, Charles Wilson, Wayne Corbett, and the tight end Kyle Brady, a couple of rookies. And the offensive line, Duffy Dixon, Carlton Hasselrig, who's off to a good start after a year out of football. Matt Willig and Ciapelli Malamala are the tackles. Well done. I worked on it all well, afternoon. Well done. I'm proud of you. Yeah. I <laughs> and they quickly get out of the hole the Raider defense after Derek Hoskins makes that tackle up front Smith and Swilling Jerry Ball and Chester McLaughlin very strong inside the linebackers a young but talented group Fredrickson and Beekert along with Mike Jones and the secondary you recognize some of these names Terry McDaniel Albert Lewis Hoskins and Eddie Anderson now, Richie Kotite said yesterday, if they complete a pass, they might come back with a pass. Yeah, he said it, we're going to try to run, keep running the same successful plays, throw the ball on successful plays, and try to get them out of rhythm. So much for what Richie Kotite said. Lied. Again, you can never trust these head coaches. I right? know it. <laughs> Guys from Brooklyn. Yeah. <laughs> Opening drives for the Jets this year. They have uh, had one sustained drive. That was in week two against the Colts. That was a game in which they lost a huge lead. They uh, fell to the Dolphins. They came back and lost to the Colts. Then they defeated Jacksonville. And last week, really disappointed with the loss to Atlanta when they fumbled twice on first and goal in the fourth quarter. Whoops. Swelling. Got him. 
three last week and one today. The redemption continues for Pat Swilling. And there is a flag down, but remember, the, the Jets told us they were going to try to put a, a tight end over Swilling uh, some to avoid a, an open-ended rush like that. They didn't there, and he just ate the play up. Holding number 63 offense, penalty decline, third down. Now to these defensive ends, Swilling and Anthony Smith, this is time it's Swilling number 56, are a lot like their wide receivers. These guys have game-breaking speed. You know, Boomer looks like for a moment he's going to get away. A second effort play by Pat Swilling. And he has had an impact as he has come to the Raiders. His fourth sack of the year. Longtime All-Pro with the New Orleans Saints. Three sacks last week. Two really tough years in Detroit. Here's Osiris on third down. That ball is tipped and incomplete, and the Jets will have to punt. So a running play that went awry, and then Pat Swilling's fifth sack in his fifth game has pushed the Jets back into a punting situation. Good pass rushers like Pat Swilling put pressure on quarterbacks and offensive linemen. Saw a lot of this today, Vern. A lot of tip balls, particularly in that San Francisco game. The ball went right off of somebody's helmet, right off somebody's helmet and part of uh, Chester McLaughlin, a very large body. Brian Hansen on to punt. That's a fairly low kick, Tim Brown. He's averaging double digits for the return game. Brian Hansen has a net punting average of only 33 yards this year, and Tim Brown is averaging better than 10 yards per return, 11.7 as a matter of fact. So Tim Brown has given the Raiders the ball at the 46-yard line. Oakland and the New York Jets, and the Raiders have the ball at their own 46. James Jett one of the swifter wide receivers in the league is operating at right side. Handoff goes to Harvey Williams. He is knocked backwards. Maybe picked up a yard. But the middle of that Jet defensive line, we mentioned that Donald Evans is injured, not playing tonight. Otis Smith at cornerback is also on the inactive list with uh, an injury problem. He has four interceptions. That's why Vance Joseph is getting the start at that right cornerback spot. Yeah, and that's going to be a very interesting, you know, one of those game within the games, number 43 right there, Vance Joseph against these wide receivers, because he has never had to back up as a defensive back before. Well, he's giving James Jett a little bit of room. Absolute big cushion. Second down. And again, the Jets came across the neutral zone. That pass is caught by Derek Fenner, number 34. If it stands, it's good for a substantial gain and a first down at the 36. Well, the, the, these um, receivers for the um, Raiders really get a lot of respect around the league, Vern. Offside, right defensive end, defense, defense. Penalty is declined. First down. You know, a lot of times, the look at the cushion here and here, but here in particular. I mean, he's given him a good 10, 12 yards, and that I mean, it's going to there's going to be a lot of out routes thrown and hook routes thrown until that cushion is eaten up. Some that last game was 16 yards. Blitz threatened by the Jets. Hostetler back to throw, goes deep left side, way downfield for Daryl Hobbs, and it's overthrown. Match one against uh, Vance Joseph. And he did his job there. I mean, it's got to be a little frightening against this speed when you're playing defensive back for the first time. That's concern in his eyes, but he does a good job against Daryl Hopps. He gets the head turn. I mean, he looked like there, Vern, like he's played some defensive back. And uh, he, he was just converted, but that, that was a very good play by Vance Joseph. Richie Kotai talking uh, with us yesterday said he really early on in camp as a free agent began to attract their attention with his natural athletic ability. And he's got a chance to shine tonight. Time has been called. Nice overhead shots are courtesy of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. At the controls tonight is Captain Dick Esch from Pompano Beach, Florida. Has to be kind of a nice night to sail around up there. Mm. You said don't sound enthused. Well, I, you know, I'm not a big blimp guy. I no, but I, I would not. I'm, I'd be frightened right now. I'd like to get you in a blimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About game time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Second down and ten. Victor Green in as a fifth back. Hostetler. 
Rays at right side for Tim Brown. And they got Joseph. And they're going to keep picking on him, and that's good offense. And, and that is part of that new Raider thing, too. That was a timing pass there as Brown went in motion. He just ran the, uh, the little square out, and the ball was thrown early and was thrown on time. The net result is Hosteller's getting rid of the ball quicker, and he's not being hit and pummeled as much as he has been the last couple of years. The ball comes out before he turns. And I don't care who you are, it's a tough route to cover when it's thrown on time like that. Well done. That's a first down after the 17-yard thing. No score. There's Wilbur Marshall. This is Jet in motion. Hostetler, a lot of time. That ball is caught by Tim Brown. He's got three first and goal. Well, you know, these wide receivers, uh, it's actually a track team masquerading as wide receivers. You know, they'll throw the ball deep, and then they'll dink the ball off to Tim uh, Brown. And, and you know, and then they have a new thing here with a bunch guys here. This this is Tim Brown here. This is another new kind of Raider thing, an old Washington Redskin thing, where they bunch receivers can send two guys short, and then behind him in the deeper zone is Tim Brown. That is a very fast trio of Smurfs. <laughs> and, and they're big. They're big Smurfs. Uh, they, they are, it is an oxymoron. You cannot have a large Smurf. <laughs> Harvey Williams drives it down to the one. The Redskins had that bunch of uh, receivers that they referred to as the Smurfs for years. The Raiders uh, this season have gotten off to very slow starts. So this has got to be encouraging for them. They've yet to score a point in the first quarter of any of their first four games. Gordon McCarter asking for the game clock to be reset. Barrett Robbins has come in now in first and goal. Got to supply some blocking help. They hand it to Fenner. Oh, dandy job. Tony Casillas got in there and cut him down. Well, goal line and short yardage defense is all about getting low and staying low. And Tony Casillas, number 92, first gets a good jump. He's right in front of you. Center doesn't get a hand on him, really. And he is right in the way of Derek Fenner. He sucked up that hole because that was where that play was supposed to be run. And they are very happy to have Casillas back. Third and goal from the two. in the eye, strength of the formation to the left, that's Cash in motion. Play action. Hostetler. Touchdown, Glover, the tight end. And they had a defensive end covering Marvin Washington. A defensive end is covering the tight end, and that is an easy mismatch for the Raiders. You know, the Raiders, this is a new Raider look, and we have seen bunch receivers. We've seen them throw some balls, some timing uh, patterns. And I think they're one of the very few teams, Dallas being the other, that can give you power on one play and then finesse on the next. Play action the call. And now here's Cole Ford, the rookie place kicker. The extra point is up, and it is good. A 54-yard drive, eight plays. It took three minutes and eight seconds. Well, football is still a game of execution and matchups and game plans, and that was a perfectly executed drive, a well-scouted play, and they got the mismatch they wanted. But on that touchdown to, go, uh, to Glover, here's the matchup. It's defensive end against the tight end. The tight end should win that, and they get a corner blitz. That's why they had the defensive end covering Andrew Glover. He's trying to hold him at the line, but he has no chance. I mean, Marvin Washington's lost in space. His job is to rush the passer, not necessarily cover uh, tight ends. Andrew Glover with the touchdown. That's his second of the season. And here's the kickoff from Cole Ford. That's a dandy kickoff. Taken by Dexter Carter, the first by San Francisco 49 -er. And fairly decent field position at the 23-yard line. The tackle made by Carl Kitt, number 46. Carter, whose role here in New York is primarily that of uh, special teams. Hasn't seen any action in the offensive backfield. Unlike the Raiders, the Jet offense doesn't have any game breakers, any guys that with quick strike capability. So if they're going to win, they got to stay in the ball game. number one. You can't fall way behind, and you can't make mistakes offensively. First down from the 23. You can't draw passes. Well, he, he dropped one for a touchdown last week against Atlanta. I'm talking about 84 Fred Baxter, whom they like, filling in for an injured Johnny Mitchell. But he dropped a, uh, a touchdown pass last week. 
and they lost the game 13 to 3. Boomer still one of the great play action quarterbacks in the game. Do you see what they're trying to do with Swilling, though? They're running boot uh, legs to his side. He has not been fooled, though, on two attempts. Pat Swilling's been staying at home and doing the job. Second down and 10. They hand it off this time. And Adrian Morrell gets across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Well, we talked about Boomer Esiason and uh, Vern going through so many new head coaches, you know, five of the last five years. But it goes with his skilled position players, too. He's got two new wide receivers. He's got a new tight end. He's got a new back uh, at the start of Murrell. I mean, it's no wonder this team is out of rhythm. Now, he's going to take a lot of the blame, and he's willing to do that. But he's playing with a whole lot of new guys again this year. That's McLaughlin coming across the line. I think Guatemala may have moved just a pinch early. And generally when Chester McLaughlin lines up over you, you get anxious. Uh-huh. All start. Number 75 offense before the snap. Five yards. Still third down. See, Apelli Malamala was the man who moved. Oh, you redeemed yourself. Thank you. I, it's, I'm the Oakland Raiders of broadcasters. <laughs> I needed a second chance. The Mulligan. He had the Mulligan. <laughs> yes, I do use those <laughs> frequently, as you know. <laughs> Third down after the five-yard penalty. Two wide receivers to the left. Here comes Swilling with an inside rush. Messiah gets rid of it. Well, is going to be knocked out of bounds short of the first down near the 29-yard line. That's a good play by Messiah, and even though they don't get the first down, he avoids the sack and he still picks up an extra, oh, probably nine yards. You can just tack that on, really, your punt. So he didn't get the first down, but you avoid the sack. You get some more yards. And that sets up Brian Hansen with his second punt. And again, he's had problems with returns this year, has Hansen. And he's got a pretty good returner that he's facing in Tim Brown. Tim Brown had one of 17 yards on the first punt. Oops. That could be a first. If that's against the Raiders, it's yeah. going to be very close to a first down. wonder what little trickery was involved there in the line. Do you suspect? I don't know if it was trickery. I think a guy just moved. Okay. Lined up right over the ball. These guys were very concerned about County making sure there were 11 guys. want to make sure there were only 11 guys yeah. out there. Ball start. Number 51 offense prior to the snap. The defense has he must not have... penetrated the neutral zone. Still fourth down. It's Eddie Mason he is the man who was uh, judged guilty of that infraction. You know, as I watched Tim Brown back here, the Raiders can beat you on special teams, Burn, just like they can beat you on offense and defense. This is a team that can win it all. The Raiders can win it all. Well, we saw today how perilous some of these... Uh, one-loss records can be with the Cowboys losing in Cincinnati, almost knocking off Miami. Well, in a game of field position, the Raiders have had the best of it. They get the ball at the 47-yard line to set this one up. Brian Hansen, another uh, former New Orleans Saints. The Raiders with a 3-1 and one start. The one loss was in overtime to Kansas City. They're, they're a good football team. I mean, look what they're doing. They're, they're running the ball very well. Joe Bugle, assistant head coach in charge of that rushing offense, 138 yards a game. It's third in the NFL. Third in takeaways, eight fumble recoveries. The weakness is on, is on pass, uh, pass offense, only 22nd. But that's kind of a reflection of how well they're running the ball. First and 10, Tim Brown comes into the slot. They toss it out to Harvey Williams. He tries to cut back and is cut down instead. <laughs> I said Steve Wisniewski thought he was running outside. I mean, Steve Wisniewski pulled all the way out to the corner, expecting Harvey Williams to be behind him. I think maybe Williams got a little bit un, uh, impatient. Middle linebackers, Mo Lewis, he's the one pointing. He's got this team scattered. He knows what's happening, and he's there to fill the hole. Don't you hate it if you're the quarterback and the guy's yeah. pointing right where you're going <laughs> to <laughs> Three wide receivers now in second down. You ready? Jets do not blitz. Draw play. Harvey Williams has the room right. 
And he gets all the way to the 40-yard line before Victor Green makes the tackle, number 21. He had nine guys at the line of scrimmage because their corners were up and, and bump and run. I think once you get past that, that first, you see all these guys up here? Once you break this initial pain, you have a lot of space in here, and that's exactly what happened with Harvey Williams on the little draw play. Good engaging by the offensive line. He, he gets past that first surge. Uh, eight or 16 yard gain for a first down. And again, the Raiders are inside Jet Country. They have first down at the 41 yard line. They fake the draw play. Hostetler goes across the middle. What a catch is made by Rocket Ismail. Holy cow, Todd Scott leveled him, and Ismail held on. And we talked about how the Raider receivers are taking turns making plays this year. It is not all Tim Brown, although Jeff Hostetter is looking deep for Tim Brown early. Two guys on him, perfect pass protection, protection, and that is a courageous catch by Ismail. The nice thing he does, though, he doesn't run into center field. He comes right square down the right. A big shot by Todd Scott, but that's a heck of a catch. Only the tenth this season for the Rocket. Here's Williams. He squirts through left tackle this time. Got blocks from Robert Jenkins and Steve Wisniewski and moves it inside the 20. You know, I mentioned in the Rocket Ismail, he is, he's become a receiver. He's not just a guy with a, with a catchy nickname. I mean, and those kind of catches are the things they need as they try to spread the ball around. You make catches like that, the quarterback wants to throw to you again. And besides that, he's wearing one of those nose things. And you always throw the guys with the nose things. Yeah, do you? Yeah. Well, Tim Brown actually doesn't wear one. Tim Brown yeah. said they don't work. They're all cosmetic. He says he wears them at night to, to so keep them yeah. snoring. There you go. See? See, Tim? Yeah. He does all right, doesn't he? Without the nose thing. Yeah, he's a lot lighter without that nose thing. But you mentioned the blitz burn. The Jets are one of the few teams in the NFL right now, when you get down to scoring territory, they blitz and play man-for-man -man defense. And you run crossing routes against man-for-man -man defense because you have plenty of time to run away from the defender. You see, right from the very get-go, Victor Green, number 21, is beaten. In the first step on that crossing route, it's a good call against man-for-man -man de defense and a blitz. With a 7-0 lead already, here's Jeff Hostetler and the Raiders. First and goal. Back to the eye. Harvey Williams. Dances in untouched for the score. And good block by Kerry Cash, too. The tight end and Skrepinek, the right tackle. Raiders are making it look easy. Finesse and power. Like the old Redskins in the Dallas of this year. Finesse and power. Very unusual today's game. Are you suggesting that Pride and Poise take a back seat? Yes. I'm trying to change the Finesse whole... Finesse and power, uh, yeah. Does that work? Is it? Uh, I have to change all the billboards in yeah, Los Angeles and you know, The whole marketing thing will... <laughs> Kaputsky. Yeah. Uh, the, the finesse <laughs> and power. Huh? The theme of the 90s. <laughs> Another cafe latte, please. <laughs> <laughs> you always were an L.A. kind of guy. See, you're just mad because they moved back to Oakland. <laughs> that is good blocking at number 88. Kerry Cash finishes it off, and that allows him to dance into the end. So there's the block. Well, the touchdown from Harvey Williams. Take a another look at it. Untouched. Uh, another key block by Derek Fenner. I mean, they have everybody participating. All the receivers, all the linemen, all the backs. And the Fenner, number 34. He's the guy who gets the first lead block cleaned up by Kerry uh, Cash. And that, that's good offense. We have seen two scores set up by good defense. They got good field position. And a nice, a nice punt return by uh, Tim Brown. So they, they've done a little bit of everything here in this first quarter. And the Jets, as we said are not a dynamic team, and they cannot get too far behind. Harvey's got the nose thing. He does have the nose thing going. The way threat that the Raiders have several. Dexter Carter. Out to the 31-yard line. James Trapp, number 37, who is a world-class sprinter, another and part of the track team, the Raider track team. He just he just kind of overran this one. But this is a guy that, you know, most track guys, most track guys aren't physical players. 
and James uh, James Trapp is kind of an exception to that rule. He makes a lot of special teams plays and physical plays. Trapp was an alternate on the men's 4x400 meter relay team. In Barcelona, fumble! And I believe the Raiders have it. Yep. Oh, boy. Well, they did it a week ago. Four turnovers inside Atlanta's 10-yard line. And the most basic of offensive plays, the quarterback center exchange they cannot execute. And this here's the snap or lack thereof. Looks like it was there. Looks like it was there, just mishandled. And Chester McLaughlin is the guy there. And and Vern, the, the Jets have to avoid the knockout punch right now because I promise you that's what the Raiders are thinking about right now. They're looking for the deep ball. And the new uh, hats come out. They're looking for the deep ball. It may be taken away, but they'd like to score here on this play. Napoleon Kaufman has come in, the number one draft pick this season. He's lined up wide to the near side. Hostetler, deep. Rocket Ismail. Other than the one sack, Jeff Hostetler has gotten very good pass protection. And when that happens, and you have a chance for these wide receivers to get downfield, it doesn't take them long to get down there and get open. And Vern, because of the respect, you see the cushion there? That, that's easy pitch and catch. And they're going to catch a few of those hooks, and then they're going to try to blow right by him. First down after the 16-yard pickup. Napoleon Kaufman darts inside his guard and tackle on the right side and gets to the 10-yard line. Napoleon yeah, uh, Kaufman has some quickness, suddenness to him, uh, Vern. You know, they're a guy that Mike White was saying, hey, he is not a third down back. He's not one of those uh, smallish little guys. He is he's a guy that is an alternate back for us. We're going to play him on first downs and second downs. But we really believe, this is Mike White talking, that he is going to be a difference in a lot of fourth quarter games. In the final minute, quarter number one, it's been all Oakland. Kaufman gets the handoff. A little elusive shift to the hips, and he moves it down to the five. Well, he's from the University of Washington, but as a prep star in California, as a junior, he was the state 100 and 200 meter champion. So he's part of the track team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he dodges, he darts, he, he uh, skips around, and then he gives you a little bit of power. And, you know, the, the Raiders had a great short yardage and goal line runner in Marcus Allen years ago, and you get the feeling that Napoleon Kaufman has that same kind of feel for the end zone that Marcus Allen had for the Raiders. We have reached the end of one in the Meadowlands. Natives are getting a little restless. Yes. Second quarter from the Meadowlands, and the Raiders have 10 first downs to one for the Jets, 140 yards to 22, and a lead on the scoreboard of 14 to nothing, and they've got a third and goal from just inside the five. Vermont Chris Pat Hayden from the Meadowlands. Here's Jeff Ostetler. First game back here since he went to Oakland, or Los Angeles, actually, in 92. Jet in motion. Harvey Williams back in, and he is stopped short, so uh, assuming now down. we get the field. Oh, he had, yeah. got, I said third and goal. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. he did get the first down. And, and Harvey Williams is a solid halfback. I mean, Mike White was saying, hey, this guy, you know, really amazes me. He had nearly 1,000 yards last season, caught 47 passes. I mean, you, you, you sense that he's happy. He likes playing. He's playing against a good offensive line. This, this guy's a solid player. Well, and we talked about Pat Swilling in the second chance. Mm -hmm. Here's another guy, Harvey Williams. And they've just had dozens of guys that have come through the Raider organization that have squeezed out two, three, four more productive years. And that goes back over 20, 30 years. First and goal. Yeah, clock was down to one. Yeah, Jeff Hosteller's going to, hey, he's going to argue with Gordon McCarter. <laughs> I think he's uh, arguing that they started the play clock a little early. I don't think he's going to win the argument. You never, do, you never do. No. You know what he said? He, is, uh, he really is a good match 
for this Raider team. You know, he, he's tough like that whole organization is. And I think he likes playing on the West Coast. You know, Ernie Johnson talked during his uh, pregame uh, segment about the visit that Mike White made to Jeff Hostetler's home in Morgantown, West Virginia, shortly after he was named head coach. And Jeff was telling us last night that it really meant a lot. Well, he, you know, he thought about not coming back. He said, hey, if Mike White or somebody like Mike wasn't going to come in and change the scheme of the offense, he said, I took too much of a beating last year. I was thinking about not coming back to the Raiders. And, and Mike White has done, really, early in his uh, head coaching career with the Raiders, I think, a terrific job utilizing a lot of different people and keeping players happy. They seem to really be having a good time. And after all, it's a game. Mike White, a head coach for the first time in the NFL at the age of 59. to the one-yard line. Mo Lewis, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. I say Mo Lewis, the middle linebacker, because that's the spot he's playing now with Marvin Jones injured and out. He's the only middle linebacker in the NFL with Roman numerals after his name, Mo Lewis the third. And as a matter of fact, last week, they welcomed Mo Lewis the fourth. Yeah. First child. And that guy is a good player, and he is being asked to play out of position. He is really a weak side linebacker because of the injury to Marvin Jones. They have him playing in the middle. Second and goal from the one. Play action. Hostetler chased and out of bounds back at the six. Eric Howard supplied the initial pressure. Well, no, no defensive ends on Andrew Glover that time. It was Mo Lewis. A much better matchup. Remember the first touchdown, they threw it to Andrew Glover when he was covered by a tight end. That time, he was covered by the linebacker, and the linebacker, in this case, Mo Lewis, won that battle. And that is very good defense when they really, really needed it. And Mo Lewis, number 57, he does not fool by the play-action fake. It makes, uh, that's recovery speed by a linebacker. And the Raiders are going to have to waste yeah. a second timeout. They've burned two of them now. You don't feel as badly about it when you're ahead 14 to nothing. Time has been called. You look from overhead, and here are the Knights' GMC truck leaders. Left-handed. That's uh, more than I can count. That's about 56 burn. I'm going to call Gordon McCarter and get some help. Here's Hostetler on third down. the end line by oh. Tim Brown. No touchdown. He, Boy. Uh, th that was a great catch. I don't care whether his feet were in or out because that took some care of, uh, courage. That was the old floater. Uh, I, I think maybe Hustler's arguing for pass interference, but he was definitely out of the end zone. Number 81 is in the slot. This guy is a force inside the 20. He's a force anywhere in the field. Picking on Vance Joseph. Makes the ad lib. You know what they may be arguing? They may be arguing that he, that he would have come down, would have come down inbound. inbound had he not been pushed out. In which case, I think they have a pretty valid yes. argument. Yes, and in that case, it would have been a touchdown. Here is Cole Ford, the rookie, and time has now been called. Delay of game. The clock went down, and so they'll move it back five yards. Take another look at it. You're going to see number 81, Tim Brown. Now, now game. would he have come down into inbounds in the end zone? Down. That's the issue. It's a judgment call, and back judge said uh, no, no Man, go. Candidly, hard to tell from that rear angle. Now he's going straight up. I think he, he there's a plausible argument that he could have. He right. went straight up. It wasn't like he was jumping out of bounds. He was jumping straight up. Here's the field goal attempt. It is up, and it is good. Now there's another flag down. Nope. Just a handkerchief. There you go. The flags are yellow. It's the hankies are white. Bill Cower sent one. Self <laughs> <laughs> trailing Philadelphia 17-0 and scored 48 unanswered points. Based on what we've seen tonight, I don't like the Jets' chances of scoring 48 unanswered points. Different, uh, different week, different game. Here's the kickoff from Cole Ford. Dexter Carter has it. 
Well, it has been Raider domination. And we've got a little bit of a battle breaking out at the 28-yard line. That's, well, they, wouldn't be a Raider game without one. No. Eric Ball is another one of these guys, 42 for the Raiders, another good special teams player. And they brought him in just to play special teams. Yeah, he's a backup fullback, but he's going to see more action on these kind of plays. Bumps off uh, Brad Baxter, or Fred Baxter, the tight end, and puts a stop on him. First down and 10, Jets down by 17. Adrian Morrell tripped up by Rob Fredrickson, number 53. Now the Jets' possessions thus far have not been productive. Obviously down 17-0 plays on the opening and then three and out and a fumble Esiason and uh, Cal Dixon. You know, I think this is one of those statement drives. I mean, they are not a great catch-up team. It's unlikely that they can even catch up tonight, but they have to do something here, I think, to have some, some chance, either at the field goal or at least a few first downs. Blitz coming. Oh, what a block. My goodness. Baxter laid a block on Mike Jones that was incredible. <laughs> it was leverage more than anything yeah, else, yeah. but wow. It was a leaping Mike Jones, number 52, the linebacker, but the, the fullback, Brad Baxter, number 30, who is a great pass protector and short yardage runner. And uh, the, Russian, the Russian judge gave him a 9.8 on the dive. <laughs> That's good blocking, and Baxter does that, and he's a good short yard at the goal line one. Pass complete for a first down at the 34-yard line. Play action for Messiasen. Diving catch is made up at the 47-yard line by Kyle Brady, the tight end. But this one may come back because of a holding penalty. And Kyle Brady, their number one draft pick, is extremely large. That's going to be against the Raiders. Yeah. You know, he's 6'6", his program height is 6'6", 260, and, and he is that. A lot of guys, they list at 6'6", and you meet them, and they, you know, they're 6'3", 6'4". But this Billy guy... Of hand, number 99 defense, jammed to the face. Penalty declined, first down. But this guy, number 81, has a chance to be a, fo a real force. Number 81. I mean, he's a dominating block. That's what he was primarily known as in college, but that's a good adjustment by a guy who's 6'6", 260. In good hands. And may have been trapped. Yes. May have been trapped. Yeah. First down. Messiah and Morrell. Tell you what, he got a heck of a block from Wayne Kevin. Number 80, away from the play initially. And the rookie from Hofstra stayed with his block, and that gave Morrell a little bit of room. And now we've got another altercation. Corbett. Great story, didn't he? Yeah, wonderful story. Born and raised in New Jersey, went to Hofstra, where he played for the... Flying Dutchman. My father was a graduate of Hofstra. I thought I'd give you an opportunity yeah. to... But a free agent, you know, used to watch the Jets from the other side of the, the fence, and, you know, one of those kind of stories came in as the 10th wide receiver. They gave him number three, not thinking he was going to make the team. Well, he wears 80 now. Here's Asias, he's swelling his there. Good job, and here's Quebec. He's a good little player. And you know why, Vern? Because football is important to Wayne Quebec. I mean, it really means a lot to him. He, I, I think he's still so afraid of getting cut, even today, that he gives you every single thing he has on every play, whether it's blocking as he did the play before, and here's just kind of a delay play, kind of bumps into Pat Swilling. The same kind of play that San Francisco runs with such great success. And, and you know, this is meritocracy. I mean, it, it doesn't matter what school you come from. If you can play, you're on the field. Corbett with the first down. Here's Esiason. That's a little pressure. Goes deep to Brady and he can't quite hang on. Just a little over his head and behind him. Really, I thought that ball was catchable. Did you? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it took some adjustment. But I thought Kyle Brady had a chance to grab that one. It's, it's hard to overthrow him at 6'6". And if he, you know, if he can, uh, you know, become that deep uh, down the field threat, okay, the Raiders are going to have 
a pretty good player. And they need some dynamic guys in offense. You can say that wide receivers, they really don't have a lot of them. Ryan Yarbrough comes in now for the first time. Backs are split on second down. Jerry Ball, number 93, gets Baxter and cuts him down for loss of five yards. Go back and, and look at that Brady uh, play. I thought this was a pretty good throw, Vern. You know, he had to adjust a little bit, but, but clearly catchable. And when you're down 17 to nothing and you're struggling for your life as a team, your guys have to make plays like that. By the way, every player for the Jets wearing a DS patch on their left shoulder. That's in memory of Dick Steinberg, the general manager who died of cancer at the age of 60 on Monday. gets it going. Here's Brady. Caught this one. He did. A little easier catch, but it started with Esiason buying himself another chance, another opportunity. Because there was a good pass rush by Ball, by McLaughlin, by Swilling, and Smith. I mean, he had some inside pressure, actually, Andre Bruce. And he moves around pretty good. Now, everybody's been questioning his arm strength, Vern. I'm not so think, I don't think that is so much the issue. It's really the deep play people around him. He doesn't have those kind of weapons that Jeff Hostetler has. Double tight end set on first down. Morrell goes right. Oh, my Rejected. goodness. Eddie Anderson has done that a few times in his career. Rejected. Oh, brother. <laughs> he is a linebacker playing safety. I mean, you can give him a 33, and you can stick him back there in the open space, but deep in his heart and the way he plays, he's a linebacker. Go back to the point you made at the beginning of this drive, Pat. I would think now Richie Kotite and the Jets can take a little bit of solace out of this. It, a little yeah. glimmer of hope. Yeah, absolutely. And I think if you're Richie Kotite, you have to take a touchdown. And the pass for Corbett, incomplete. And we had Corbett and Kyle Brady right in the same area. Bottom of the screen, number 56, is Pat Swilling, who has really put in some heat on Boomer Esiason. That's what he came here to do. He said, that's what I do best. Now, not only does he put pressure on quarterbacks, he puts pressure on left tackles. Now, that was not a speed rush. That was a bull rush over Willick, who goes 317. Sometimes backwards. Yeah. Third down. Baxter back in the line. Esiason steps up in the pocket, goes into the end zone for Quebec. At the five, actually. And it's going to be fourth down. And that, that's when you wish Corbett had uh, two or three inches of Kyle Brady's height. Flag is down. Again, Pat Swilling, number 56 is really putting a lot of different moves on Matt Willard. The play before, it was a bull rush. He gets held right there. That may have been the call. Holding. And that's a speed 77 rush. 77 offense. Penalty declined. Fourth down. So two different pass rushes by Pat Swilling back to back. I mean, you know, we talk about running backs that changes the pace and wide receivers. Well, Pat Swilling has a change of pace on that rush. Swilling with 90 and a half sacks now, five this season. And here is Nick Lowry. Well, Nick Lowry has a very unusual right shoe. His left shoe is size 11. His right shoe is size 9. Likes that tight fit. That is tight. Nice and tight through the uprights. <laughs> Good shoe, Nick. Nice Didn't know shoe. these place, the field goal kickers bind their feet. <laughs> We've discovered something brand new. <laughs> from up uh, above the Meadowlands in hmm. East Rutherford, New Jersey, and providing tonight shots from above, the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes. The Goodyear Blimps are now in their fourth decade of live sports coverage. He's up there somewhere. Mm -hmm. 60 degrees, first night of October. Floyd Peters, longtime defensive coach for a number of teams in the league. Now with Mike Whitestaff at Oakland, talking to his guys, and here's Don Silvestri. Napoleon Kaufman, three yards back. Yeah. Whoa! Nope, nope, nope. Whoa! Now the ball's got to come out entirely over that line. You, you know, unlike when you cross the plane of the goal line going in, 
the ball has to come completely out over that imaginary line that encircles the entire world, that goal line. Napoleon Kaufman has learned the first lesson of being a rookie. <laughs> Pay attention to your elders. Yes, and he was, uh, uh, he was thinking about it. Yeah. Now watch the feet there, but where's the ball? Uh, it never crossed that line, and so they get it on the 20. Which, as we know, is a line in perpetuity. Yes. Circles goes on the forever globe. and ever and ever. I've crossed it uh, all over the world, that goal line. Have you? Uh-huh. Remember what is most around, exciting? Uh, just outside London. I kind of stumbled over it. I thought Karachi was a good one. First out and 10. Hostetler. Overthrown and incomplete for James Jett. Coverage by Aaron Glenn that time, number 31. Last year's number one pick. Well, the Raiders up 17-0. They had the punt on their first possession of the night, but uh, then back-to-back -back touchdowns and uh, most recently a field goal that gave them a 17-0 lead is now 17-3. Well, you know, they are... Um they are spreading it around again. I think that you've seen a little bit of everything. They're still taking the old Raider shots. They're still taking, they've thrown three deep balls. And then they come back and they run the ball. And they throw some time in the It is a new offense. Kaufman. Good job by Eric Howard. Eric Howard, who was another of the former New York Giants, came as an unrestricted free agent and playing a position with which he is totally unfamiliar. Left defensive end, and he told us this week, he said, I've been playing inside a defensive tackle for 10 years. He said, I'm a little concerned about going out there. You have to guard a lot more space or defend a lot more space as a, de as a defensive end. But boy, he, he has been a good run stopper for his entire 10-year career run. Out of Washington State. Third and 10. 6.20 to go before halftime. Blitz written by Mo Lewis. Nope. They stunt defensively. Hostetler scrambles. Ball's loose. loose. Jets have it. Got with it. No, they call him down. They're going to they say down. Going with the ground. Cause the fumble. The runner is down by contact. The Eric Howard, we just talked about him, number 74. He is a guy that's going to give you a full day's work. First, he runs through uh, kind of Greg Strapanek, good protection, but he doesn't quit. Doesn't give it, stays with it. Oh. The ball was fumbled, and that was a fumble. Oh, that was oh, a fumble. oh. He got him. Dexter Potter takes the punt at the 15 yard line. I think that was a fumble. It was a fumble, and that was a break the Jets really needed. Take another look at it. Was Hostetler down? Well, my ball's out before his knee was down. I, that, that is a fumble. Should have been Jets' ball there. That scramble of Jeff Hostetler, I believe he fumbled the ball. And we're going to watch his, his uh, left knee, and then you can see his ball come out. There's his left knee. The ball is already coming out, and he has not hit the ground yet. That should have been a fumble. It was recovered by the Jets, and they should have had the ball around the uh, Raider 30-yard line. First down and 10. They don't. Here's Esaias in the handoff. Morrell up the middle, ankle tackled at the 34-yard line. The stop is made by Derek Hoskins, number 20, but a good bit of running from Adrian Morrell. One of the few times the Raider defense has given up a run this season down the middle. I mean, when you have Chester McLaughlin and you have Jerry Ball and Greg Beaker at the middle linebacker, they're pretty tough down the middle. But a good cutback run. It looked like actually Robbins overran it. A good cutback run by Morrell and uh, pick up the first. Yards on seven carries now. Offset high this time. The size. Bring it on Morell again. Oh boy! Eddie Anderson saved the touchdown. Ouch, ouch. When he was tackled, I mean, Eddie Anderson went high, and that's what the Jets were upset about to the back of his neck, and Murrell had a very awkward fall after that tackle. But twice in a row, he has popped through the initial wave of defenders. First time it was over the center, this time off tackle. The stetter, uh, stop and stetter, but watch it, it, at the end of this run what happens. He takes a really awkward fall as Eddie Anderson grabs him from the back of the neck. That's a clean tackle, nothing illegal there. Actually, he gets... And I thought he was going to hurt both of his knees. Right. Game 24, Asylum play action. 
No contact. James Folston, number 55. Look, Boomer thinks there might have been a little bit of physical contact there. Let's take a look now at the Lee Sport scoreboard for action today. How about that Kansas City game? The run that Steve Bono had. 76 yards for a touchdown. Longest run ever by a quarterback? For a touchdown, yes. What was your longest run? Uh, about three yards. But it was for a safety. <laughs> Caught from behind? <laughs> yes. The toss left, Morrell. Pancakes the defender. And the Jets move it inside the 35. Hey, one thing about these Jet wide receivers, they block. We saw it from Crebet earlier that time. Charles Wilson, number 89, came down on a crackback block, and he really gave the initial block that, that allowed Adrian Morrell to get outside. So the wide receivers are very much uh, involved in the blocking scheme of these Jets. What they really need to do is get them downfield as receivers, though. Four minutes remaining in the first half, 17-3. It'll be third down and three. And time has been called by Boomer Esiason. That's the first for the New York Jets, and they've got two remaining. Oakland has used two of its. Oh, you saw the replay of Troy Aikman's strained calf. Yeah. Wasn't that bizarre? Funny. It was not even hit. No. No, just kind of dropped back and, and just grabbed his... Uh... And I saw some mention that he thinks he might be out a couple of weeks. Three weeks. Third and three. Charles Wilson. Esiason. Incomplete. Oh. Gravett. Twice. McLaughlin Twice. all over Esiason. Yeah, and, and Chester McLaughlin has a habit of doing that. He is strong, he has speed, and he has incredible power. He is number 91. And for a big guy, he weighs 320 pounds. He has got a great first couple of steps. Now, he and Carlton, ha Carlton Hasselrig, number 63, that's a good matchup of NFL strongmen. Hasselrig is strong as they come as offensive guards, and Chester McLaughlin, a pretty strong guy. Mick Lowry has hit more field goals in excess of 50 yards. Second most in NFL history behind Morton Anderson. He's going to have a chance to try one here with a field goal effort of maybe 51 or 52 yards. See where they spot it. Coming out of halftime, the Fruit of the Loom halftime report. Vince Cellini has the no-huddle highlights. So. You know, I don't think it's, that's a bad call. You, you know, you're a one-in-three team right now. You know, you're, you're really fighting to, for respectability, trying to put a team together, trying to get guys to play together. Um, I like the call. And it is, let's be honest, it's not a Super Bowl team. Right. Two of four on fourth down conversions in this young season. And a fourth and three now trailing by 14 with under four minutes to go in the hand. Stunts by the defensive line. The ball is batted down Swilling. by Pat Swilling. Boy, he has done everything this first down. And we have seen power rushes, speed rushes, and that time... He just kind of just stopped right there and batted the ball down. Well, Jeff Hostetler comes in with the Raiders, and he talked a little bit about the Raider mystique. Well, you know, that Raider mystique comes back as soon as you start winning, and, and that's the whole key. You know, the Raiders of old uh, were a team that... Uh, uh, won big ball games, and I think uh, you know that's what we want to get back. We want to get back that tough, physical, dominating, uh, winning football attitude. They're going deep. Rocket Ismail has it inside the 20 at the 18. They beat Vance Joseph. Sooner or later, they're going to play like the Raiders of old. I mean, they played like the Raiders of new in the short, rhythmic type of passes. But they're always looking for the play that'll break your back. And they've got the quarterback who can throw it, and they've got the track team that can catch it. 48 yards on the pass and catch. First down at the 18-yard line. Harvey Williams caught it dropped after a yard gain. 
you know, they're one of the, we, we talked about it, the, the, the muscle and then the, the deep ball. I mean, uh, remember Joe Bugle's teams when he was coaching mm -hmm. the offensive line with the, with the Redskins? They, they were like that. Joe Gibbs was the head coach. So the Cowboys give you a little bit of that. And they give you a lot of ways they can beat you. There's Joe. I mean, they can beat you with those long bombs. They can grind it out. They can protect the lead. They can also win on defense and I think win on special teams. This is a very good and talented way to team. And they have a second down and nine with two and a half to go. In the first half. Into the corner, Tim Brown. They got Joseph. Touchdown. There's also a flag down, but the flag may be inconsequential. It's not fair for Vance Joseph to be going through this tonight, Vern. The man has never in his entire life played defensive back. And he's got to go against, in this play, Tim Brown. Pass he beat him on the first step. Number 43 defense, penalty declined. Touchdown. Yeah, it was pass interference and still the great concentration and the catch by Brown. But Vance Joseph is being asked to do some things that, quite honestly, he's just not capable of doing just yet. Just learned how to back up as a defensive back a few months ago. Tim Brown gets the touchdown. Cole Ford's on to try the extra point. Well, that was quick. After the missed fourth down play, three plays. The highlight, a 48-yard pass from Hostetler to Rocket Ismail, and then the touchdown. Hostetler to Tim Brown. And this was 80% catch because Tim Brown, this ball it was thrown a little bit late because of the rush. And Joseph is making up some speed there and he interferes with them. Incredible concentration and then strong hands. Good receivers have strong hands. You know, they don't just seem to bounce out of them. But there's a guy that has been, you know, everybody talks so much about Jerry Rice and, and Michael Irvin and Sterling Sharp and all those guys. You know, the long pass to the other receiver Ismail set the play up, the touchdown play. And this is the Raiders of old. They may have left uh, Los Angeles, but they're still doing this. And this is what people fear when you play them. And that was on Vance Joseph. Not satisfied, they come back and throw the touchdown pass to Tim Brown on Vance Joseph. Victor Green on the left and the erstwhile backup quarterback from the University of yeah. Colorado. Ford, the kicker for the Raiders, uh, knows that uh, this is a limited role for him, although he's making the most of it. I mean, he has had a real nice uh, couple of games in uh, lieu of Jeff Jager, who's injured. They expect him back, and he's still on the leader. Nice kickoff. Dexter Carter, five yards back. That'll be a touchback and come out to the 20-yard line. Cole Ford will find a new job if the Raiders don't want him because he is kicking off exceptionally well, and he's been very strong in the field goal department for him, too. Well, place kickers are kind of like baseball managers. You keep moving around? Once you, get into, <laughs> once you get inside the tent, there always seems to be a job. <laughs> that is the truth. It's getting into the tent that's a problem. <laughs> oh. Well, Vance Joseph, Kenny Rose, the special teams coach, talking with the rookie cornerback. Kenny Rose, who took an invitation to retire this year and join Richie Kittite's staff. First down and 10. Into the flat. Vern, you can't win in the NFL, I don't think, on a regular basis unless you have some game breakers and uh, some guys who can get you 40, 50 yards. Unless your defense is going to give you the ball five, six, seven turnovers in. The Jets don't have that yet. Richie Kotite is looking for that kind of mix. And, you know, esiason has got new wide receivers, new backs, three new offensive linemen. And that is that is not the uh, mix of a good offensive football team while they're still getting ac accustomed to one another. Two-minute warning. We're getting some consoling remarks from his teammate, Marcus Turner. And then at the end of the conversation... A nice hug. Yeah. It's, uh, I I'm not sure it's entirely fair to yeah. expect him to cover these guys when he's never done it before. Second down and 10. Messiahson. Well, that one picked off the official, got the umpire. 
I mean, hit him right in the neck. And that's a substitute umpire, isn't it? Ed Kukart. Yeah. A regular umpire with the uh, with this crew. Ed Fippick. Yeah, Ed Fippick is out with some rib injuries, I understand. On the left side of the screen. Boom, he was open. You got to get those hands up, though. You know, yeah. you, you can't catch the ball with the hands at the side. Boomer can't believe it. Now, you know, the, the umpires have come into, into play a couple times for the Raiders this year. Remember against Kansas City, the umpire got in the way of Jim Brown. And right. They thought caused an interception or overtime. So let's On third off. down, watch out. Could get ugly here. Aaron Wallace, number 51, comes to the very top of the screen. Beats Malama. And again, that's, there's not a lot Boomer Siasen can do. They, they're coming at you in waves, these Raiders from Castle. Brian Hansen, this will be returned. Tim Brown at the 47. And we've got 91 seconds remaining in the first half. The Raiders have the ball at the 46-yard line. And there's a flag on the play against the Raiders. That was the... Ineligible downfield, number 51, kicking team. Friendly decline, first down. Jets, not Raiders. Six days to Sunday on November 8th, TNT will take NFL fans where they've never been before. Was. Yeah. Overtime. Dallas wins all the time on run. First down and ten. Harvey Williams to the 42. Raiders are out of timeouts. Coming up, the Fruit of the Loom halftime report. Warren Moon with the weekend off will be in the studio with Vince and Mark and Kevin Kiley. Second down eight. Oops, incomplete. Gary Cash, the tight end, number 88. Stops the clock with a third down and eight. And the Raiders have two tight ends that they can play pretty well for. One of them is Kerry Cash, number 88 right there, more uh, for the receiver type. And then Andrew Glover, the other tight end, already got a touchdown pass in this game, who's a blocker type, can be a dominant blocker. They have a, a nice mix with their tight ends. Third and eight. are coming. Mo Lewis! Oh, yeah! yeah they, they, just when they needed a play from the defense, you know Mo Lewis is going to come up with it. You talk about a guy being versatile. I mean, last week against Atlanta, they asked him to play defensive end, and Hostetter comes limping off. But number 57 is going to come slipping up and sneaking up in the hole, and he times the blitz pretty well. Hits the gap, gets through the back, then gets to the quarterback. And Hostetter got up limping from that hit, that shot. But you know, it's one thing to blitz. It's the other to time it right and then defeat the block of the back. And that is just what Mo Lewis III did on that one. And Jeff Hostetter over mm. on the Raider bench in pain. Third sack by the Jets. Despite the score on the board, 24-3. You recognize this young yeah. man, right? I tell you, he's been in the league for about, I think, since 1869 when the game was still <laughs> first invented. That's old Vince Evans. Played uh, college football with Vince, believe it or not. 16 years in the NFL. Surprisingly, about the backup quarterbacks in the National Football League, how little experience there is around the league, Vern. And again, we have seen it time and time again, how important that backup role is for the Cowboys today. Wade Wilson had to come off the bench. Troy Aikman out with the injury. On fourth down, here's Jeff Gossett to punt. Dexter Carter back to return it. Nice and high. They 
I can't blame that on coaching. You know, you know Rich Kotai is going to take some grief for this performance, but that's just awful special teams. Awful. Well, your team needs it. You know, you, you've just stopped them. You forced the punt. And Dexter Carter has done that. I mean, has caught a lot of punts over his years that went right through the proverbial breadbasket. And there were a host of Raiders playing some pretty good special teams tonight. And they're going to have another chance at it. 51 is Aaron Wallace. James Trapp down there again. Dan Land, 25. whole bunch of guys. No yeah. timeouts, though. Josh Stedler comes back on the field. 43 seconds to go. They've got the ball at the 16. Looking right with time. Now he has to run out of the pocket. Should have gotten out of bounds. Should have gotten out of bounds. Bach will continue to run. It's now at 30 seconds. You know, it's easy to rally around Jeff Hostetler, though. You know, the play before, a couple plays before he gets hurt. And, and I think this is why offensive players and defensive teammates like Jeff Hostetler. He is one tough guy. Left side, Tim Brown. Out of bounds at the six. Yes, yeah, so they got to have to give Vance Joseph some help, Vern. I'm sorry. You know, give the poor man some help. Get some help over the top. Wide side of the field, number 81, is Tim Brown. He can catch the ball deep, he can catch the ball short, and then when he catches it, he usually you do something with it afterwards. Pick it on Vance Joseph. We said at the very beginning of this show, the Raiders knew he was playing there, and they were going to work on it. And they have done that in this first half. Tim Brown has caught six now for 78 yards and a touchdown. It's Daryl Hodge to wind up left this time. Incomplete, Vance Joseph. Vance, I mean, that's one for you, Vance. So that's one for you, and, and you deserve one every now and then. But they're going to continue to work on him, and he continues to go man on man. This time with Daryl Hobbs, it's the fade route, the same route that Tim Brown scored on earlier. But Joseph does a good job that time. And the Raiders do a good job of picking up Mo Lewis, who before had uh, given Hostetler a tough time. That time, Harvey Williams stayed up and got a piece of it. Second and goal, back to split. 11 seconds to go. They go in the left side for Hobbs. Touchdown over Vance Joseph. Sorry, Vance. Sorry, Vance. That's almost painful. It is. I mean, I know he's got some athletic ability, Vern, but there are dozens of guys who have played defensive corner in the league available. And, you know, to put him out there is a travesty. The guy just is not ready to play corner, particularly against guys like Tim Brown, this time Daryl Hobbs. And that was just a change of pace. They faked the, they faked the uh, fade, and then they kind of ran us out pass. Extra point is up and through. Well, this is a confidence builder for the Raiders. And Jeff Hostetter said, hey, we are ready to break out. We are ready to explode, he told us yesterday. Well, they have done that here in the first half with 31 points. And they give it to Tim Brown for a touchdown. Daryl Hobbs gets this touchdown. Andrew Glover, a tight end, has got another one. Ismail's been involved. They have gotten all their offensive players involved in these 31 points in the first half. Young man who played backup quarterback at the University of Colorado, pressed into service on a night that he will never forget. It's been a tough one. Yeah. Uh, you, know, you, you love to see his, his teammates at least tell him to keep his chin up. I mean, I, you, I love to see that to a guy who's who's having a very difficult night. I mean, that's those are good guys who are doing that to Vance Joseph. Ready to kick off again. Dexter Carter is back to return it, along with Ron Carpenter. That's taken short by Kyle Brady. And he gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line with two seconds to go. 
And another little struggle erupts. I'm sure frustration is uh, a part of this. Well, Richie Kotite, his team down 31 to three. You know, he's he's kind of an upbeat guy. He is Richie Co He is a, as optimistic as you know, infomercial host. You know, he. <laughs> How optimistic well, he's, is you know, that? he's an upbeat guy. I mean, you've uh, seen all those infomercial guys that host these shows, you know, selling. They're very I need to talk peppy. to you about you, what you're doing with your leisure time. <laughs> very peppy. <laughs> but uh, this has to be a, a disgusting first half. <laughs> it has been a tough one. We've reached halftime. 31-3. to three. Oakland leads the New York. Berlin quiz, Pat Hayden. And 31 to 3, this has been all Raiders. Yeah, and you know, the uh, the thing about the, the, the possession time and the field of possession for the Raiders, I mean, they've had great field position all this entire first half. I think that set it off. So they, they played good special teams, they played real good defense, the offensive had some knockout punches. And it's uh, time for the Riders game summary. Take a look at this, Pat. Yeah, they, they, we talked about field position, average position, 50 yard line. They had four touchdowns and a field goal inside the 20. And uh, as good as it is for the Raiders, as you can see all those things, it has been equally bad for Vance Joseph, the corner for the Jets. Victim of two touchdown passes in the first half. Those came in the second quarter. Here's Carter returning the kickoff, and he gets out near the 30-yard line, tackled at the 25. Joe King makes the stop, number 31. Boomer Esiason, who among... The misfortunes that befell the Jets in the first half had a bobble on a center snap, and that led to one of the touchdowns. Well, I still maintain Boomer Esiason can play this game uh, effectively, but he cannot carry this team. And he's, he's much like Vance Joseph has been asked to carry or, or do too much on defense. I think Boomer has been asked to do too much with this offensive team. Backs are split. on first down. That one is caught. Curtis Caesar, number 88. No, no, Charles Wilson, beg your pardon, number 89. It's Wilson makes the catch. Number 89, Charles Wilson, whom the Jets feel is a good receiver after the catch. But also, just getting used to Boomer Esiason, the, the timing in the field between receiver and quarterback. He just came here it, it, before the week of their first regular season game. Came here from Tampa where he played for Sam White. Here's Esiason. That was caught by Corbett. And that'll be good for a first down inside the 45-yard line. Derek Hoskins makes the tackle. Think about these Raider defensive backs, all of them will really tag you after the catch. I mean, Eddie Anderson, we've seen a lot of that. You know, McDaniel can do it. Albert Lewis. Derek Hoskins. I mean, they, they have a very good defensive line, experienced uh, defensive backs, and a good young, fast linebacker. First and ten now for the Jets. Back to the eye. Morrell. Right oh, somebody was supposed to trap lock him, but he, he, they couldn't get there. He's that quick. And, you know, the Jets said they were going to put a tight end over him and, and try to run at him. Well, they haven't done that in this game this far. But this is why you want to put a, a big guy over him, because he is so quick upfield. See, I, I think the guard was supposed to trap him, but no way are you going to get there before Pat Swilling gets the ball carrier. And notice this time he was wind up at the left end. Yep. It's kind of his call, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, he was saying last night, he was, hey, it's my call whether I'm out of the left end or right end or stand up or get the stance. And he's at left end again here. Beaker threatens the blitz. He's not coming. Esaias and lets it go off Corbett incomplete. Well, and that causes Boomer to turn around and shake his head. It's Charles Wilson, Wilson, I beg yeah. your pardon. Yeah, perfect throw. Perfect throw there. And, and these are the ones that, that define you as a receiver. Catching the ball over the middle when you know a free safety's coming down to give you a, a smack like Eddie Anderson was. And those are the ones you have to catch, make a guy miss, and then maybe you go the distance. But it has not been the Jets' knife for wide receivers. Third and 13. This time, Esiason has time, and he finds Wilson 
inside the 30 and out of bounds at the 26. That was a nice little route there by Charles Wilson. Good protection for one of the few times for, uh, this evening for Esaias and had plenty of time to find Charles Wilson. Kind of ran a, a double move. He is at the top of the screen, number 89. Corbett is 80, is in the uh, slot. And again, the, the catch-up speed there by Terry McDaniel, who can't quite get there in time, so that was a well-designed play, but it really started with very good pass protection by the Jet offensive line. Gain of 19 and a first down on third and 13. Burrell and Baxter in an offset eye this time. Anderson comes up to force the run. guys lock it up on those Raiders including wide receivers good blocking by the offensive line good blocking I think it was Charles Wilson who had a pretty good block on on his guy as well and Adrian Morell makes the most of it Morell is a guy that is uh, is not particularly fond of a moniker he has of being a change of pace back wants to be an every down back and he's had some some pretty good runs here in this first half see, see the blocking by the wide receiver though Vern and that's that's good blocking it was Wilson Wilson, 73 yards now for Morell on 11 carries. He gets the handoff again. Inside the Baxter block and goes to the five-yard line. Might have gotten to the four. Tackle made by Derek Hoskins, number 20. Well, they are running at Pat Swilling, and even, even though they are not uh, putting a tight end over him, they're getting a, a big back on him. I think it was Brad Baxter that time who got a, got a hit on him. And then a nice cutback run by Adrian Morell. I mean, he's got a pretty good vision for a big back at 215 pounds. He's got some pretty good vision and cutback ability. Second and four from the five. 31-3. Baxter in motion. Quick setup. Into the end zone. Incomplete. Well, this, Intended for Kyle Brady, the tight end. Yeah, this is where you, a guy who is 6'6 can be a tremendous advantage to a quarterback. Hey? You have to play in there strong. You really have to post up. It's like a basketball play. Big stretch, can't get the left, uh, well, he gets the left hand on, just can't hang on. He was kind of slowing down, and I think Esiason thought he was going to keep moving. And again, that is that communication, that subtle communication between quarterback and receiver. They just don't have it yet. Bro. 34 from the five. Esiason, there he goes. They even fumbled, too. Andre Bruce, number 99. Another of those who has found redemption in a Raider yeah. uniform. Yeah, they, they may have moved to Oakland, but no, I guess they're back to the Oakland days. Yeah, this, a couple, this looks like the Raiders in the 70s. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned Andre Bruce. He was the number one pick, the entire number one pick. He is number 99, who was putting some... He's in the top. This side is Pat Swilling, 56. 99's at the top on Malamala. Mala. Escapes him. He just held on the ball an awfully long time. But Andre Bruce, the number one pick in the entire draft in 1988. People thought he was a bust. Absolute bust out of Auburn. And again, he has been a good pass rusher. Number 56, defense. Half the distance from the dead ball spot. Automatic first down. Oh, on Pat Swilling. Yep. Yeah, Mike White got the nice California tan going, doesn't he? Mm hmm Knows what kind of wine goes with halibut. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Look at him. He's a Northern California guy. <laughs> okay, which kind of? I, I, I'm not a wine kind of, so you are. You tell me. Some sort of Chardonnay, I, I assume, <laughs> right? But Mike knows. He knows those things. Mike does know those yeah, things? Yeah, he's a Northern California guy. Yeah, he's yeah. back home. McIver has checked in as an eligible receiver. The ball in the end zone is caught by Brady. Touchdown. Kyle Brady he gives the Jets their first touchdown of the night. Nick Lowry is on for the extra point. Inside this thing would like to get over there right now. It's really wonderful to be with you, Bernard. Ah. Travel log. I'm still trying to find the wine for the halibut. We're going to get you a lift. You're kind of a wine guy. You, you'd probably... Well, I'm just only kind of a wine yeah. guy. 
Don't give me that reputation. I'm fighting hard enough as it is. Time is out. 31-10, Oakland leading the Jets. And let's go back and take a look at Boomer Sison on that touchdown pass. Yeah, and he really paid a price for this thing. He takes a pretty big shot from Foles to number 55. I mean, and even sometimes when you throw touchdown passes, it's still a, a long day and a frustrating day when your team still trails 31 to 10. And so yeah. even the good plays feel bad sometimes. Glenn Foley, whose former coach Tom Coughlin won his yeah. first game in the NFL today. Congratulations yeah. to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Matter of fact, the only New York Jet win this year was over Jacksonville. On the line to Tim Brown, Vance Joseph in the area, victimized for two touchdown catches in the first half. And for Tim Brown, that's eight catches now for 90 yards. You know, Tim Brown is, is the quintessential complete receiver because he'll block, I mean, he'll work the middle with, with toughness and aggressive, aggressiveness. He has speed to go deep, as we've seen tonight. I mean, he does a little bit of everything for these Raiders in the wide receiver. And he has gone beyond 5,000 yards, puts him in pretty good company with the Oakland Los Angeles Raiders. Harvey Williams gets the carry here. I saw that uh, quartet that Tim Brown joins. Well, we talked to a bunch of the Raiders about moving back to Oakland, and they really think, particularly for their defensive players, it has made a big difference. I mean, the crowd has really been in it like they didn't have in Los Angeles. And, and they, here's John Fox, the defensive coordinator. But the, for the defensive guys, they think it's been a big lift. Well, and Timmy Brown said yesterday that he's, he's responding to the crowd at the Coliseum and doing things he's never done in a football uniform uh, in the NFL before, like appealing to the crowd for more noise and such. Aaron Glenn hasn't been worked on too much tonight. I think that is only the second pass thrown his way. They threw the ball deep to his side once, and Richie Kotite said, hey, Aaron Glenn can play this game. He is as good a corner as I have seen, and he had Eric Allen. Now, first look at the cushion. That, ladies and gentlemen, is respect for speed. And that's on Ismail. Ismail slips a little bit. That gives him an opportunity to make up uh, the play. But they have not been testing Aaron Glenn. And instead, they've been working on Vance Joker. Third and eight. 31 10. Open leisure. Hostetter right side, Tim Brown. Here goes Tim Brown. One man to beat. Can't beat him. Touchdown. And he's also good after the catch. 66 yards on the pass and run. And the new Raiders. I mean, we've seen the deep throws. We know with the Ismail, that one for, I don't know, 55 yards, I think. And this one was really a short throw. It was only about 15 yards, but he turned it into a 66-yard touchdown run after a catch. They can beat you so many ways. And Vance Joseph is just so happy that was not he on that one. Nine catches, 156 yards for Tim Brown now. And Cole Ford on for the extra point. is blocked that is the only thing that's gone wrong tonight I have a feeling we may be in need of company before yes. this game is over I'm going to give you something I'm not leaving but watch again he breaks the tackle he is a strong he breaks the tackle of Marcus Turner and then it's a foot race and when you get in foot races with Raider receivers you generally lose time is gone well, some fans are still here, but they don't appear overjoyed. Well, they're, they're having a good time. I've got the guy right next to me that they might send in. Do you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Surprise visitor. I told you we didn't <laughs> want to be alone. Here's Dexter Carter. Flags are down. And Dexter Carter is down at the 35-yard line. We'll check the infraction now. Here is Gordon McCarter. And the line judge, Ben Montgomery. There is no foul. The block on the return team was perfectly legal from the side. I thought ah, so. Well done. Well done. 
Well, there are moments when I uh, realize that you and I are men of average height. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I get out of the game. Guys like Bubba Smith. We are greater history back in the in the 70s. You played with them a couple of years. Made two years with them. Uh, and I, I, what I like about him now is, is that height thing <laughs> with uh, Rocket and Tim Brown. That's not bad. You were also part of uh, Jet history, too, playing that first Super Bowl at Super Bowl III. You, what, what are your memories of, of that one? Well, Pat, I didn't think you'd even bring that yeah, up. I'm sorry, oh, Bubba. I'm sorry. Please. <laughs> Vern, at, Vern told me to. Treat <laughs> him nicely, <laughs> will you? <laughs> we got killed. We got killed. And, and, uh, and the, the offensive linemen are able to extend their hands, which makes it bad. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it, it was all set up to get more scoring. Might you uh, demonstrate the head slap on Vern? Uh, <laughs> I was going to volunteer. <laughs> and I'll bet you this. I'll bet you Bubba Smith knows what kind of wine goes with halibut. Yeah, he probably does. Now, you, this is on 7 to 10, 8 minutes to go. In the third quarter of play. Wayne Crevet was the injured player who was assisted off. Charles Wilson in motion. The Sias in back. There's Ryan Yarber, number 87. His third catch of the season. Seven forty-five to go in the third quarter. Well, you know, we saw Jacksonville last year, and you know some things. Or last last week, week, excuse me. And about some things it's, they can build it on. It seems like, like last year. year. Some things they can build on. There's not a lot. I think the, the, the Jets can feel good about tonight. They have not played well in special teams. The defense is giving up 37 points, and, and their offense only has one touchdown. That one, oh boy, Derek Hoskins almost picked it off, intended for Yarbrough. Hoskins number 20, and the punting unit comes on. But it's not going to get much easier for the Jets either. They've got to go to Buffalo next week. Yeah, these Raider defensive backs, I tell you, they, they always rally to the football. The corners play a lot of bump and run. They jam receivers. And the strong safety plays like a linebacker. And then the free safety, Derek Hoskins, just makes up ground like that. Tim Brown, who has had a memorable evening, is back to return the punt. Ryan Hansen. Fair catch called by Tim Brown. He grabs it at the 15-yard line. Time has been called. We're midway through the third quarter. Long, long night for the New York Jets. And Jeff Hosteller, who has thrown for three touchdowns tonight, is back in the cockpit. And it to Harvey Williams. Wilbur Marshall, number 58 makes the tackle and uh, appears to have arrived in an angry mood. Another good lead block by number 34, Derek Fenner. And uh, there's Wayne Corbett. We just get word he has a, has a bruised, bruised knee. knee. Could Probably be will back. return. But as I watch Fenner, number 34 for the Raiders, you know, I always think about Bo Jackson and what could have been. I and mean, Bo Jackson was number 34. And, you know, they, they looked like they were going to have that guy that was going to replace Marcus Allen and, and just be a, a dynamic player. And, and when he got injured, I, I think that may have cost them at least a Super Bowl or two. And he was that kind of impact player. Time has been called now. I'm Derek Fenner. And his teammates will get a bit of a 6.34 remaining third quarter. Oakland leading at 37 to 10. And they're looking now to second down. And seven. Backs foot behind Hostetter. We'll hand it off in the sweep to Fenner. Chris Kuski leads the way, and that's good for a first down. Near the 28-yard line. Jim Fossil, the quarterback coach of the Raiders and uh, you know everywhere he has gone and he actually had Hosteller for a while in New York the quarterback's completion percentage had gone up I mean, did it with John Elway went way up John Elway had some of his best years statistically under Jim Fossil and, and with Jeff Hosteller's completion percentage 66 percent coming into uh, tonight's ball game that is his uh, best by a long shot and he said he's done it uh, numerous times with different quarterbacks around the league and 14 of 21 tonight Glenn, and Glenn drives him out of bounds. Yeah, we got another one going on. I think much of this is derived from frustration. Yeah, if I were a Jet, I'd be frustrated too, Vern. 37 to 10. Uh, Ra the Raiders have beaten them every which way. 
Williams with 14 carries tonight. And uh, you can smile about something like that when you've got a 27-point lead. Yeah. You know, the Raiders, since Marcus Allen's big year in 85, when he had 17-59, they're looking for a guy to be, you know, the load as a running back. A little kick at the end. That's what got it started, I think. Now, Harvey Williams may not, you know, be getting 17 or 1,800 yards for them, but he is a very capable back. Oh, there's a face mask. And you combine him with Napoleon Kaufman, and that is a real good mix. Time has been called. Aaron Glenn is oh. being... Uh, Tended to on the far side. Team. Second and eight. <laughs> Williams does a good job of protecting the ball. He's down at the 35, 36 yard line. Victor Green gets mixed up with things. Marcus Turner is on now number 23 at one of the corner spots. Aaron Glenn being treated on the bench. You know, I'm surprised Marcus Turner didn't come in earlier or Victor Green and play for Vance Joseph. I mean, Marcus Turner, number 23 for the uh, Jets, is a natural corner. And yet they started Vance Joseph. He was, he was uh, burned badly, and yet they, they hung in there with him. Joseph steps in front of the pass that was thrown low and behind Daryl Hobbs. It'll be fourth down. I think the Jets need to take a chance or two, special teams-wise, whatever. Uh, maybe go for a block punt. I mean, 4.30 left in the third. They're going to have to make something, I think, happen on special teams. And there's their special teams coach, Ken Rose, who was a great special teams player himself. Six times a special teams captain for various NFL teams is down. Here's the gossip punt. Dexter Carter chases it. It goes out of bounds. When he, when he directionally punts, I think he is much better, Vern, than when he punts the ball down the middle of the field. He said, uh, you know, this year they got a little different style. They're, they're asking him to punt the ball down the middle of the field more high. But that one he angled, and he's awfully good at that. So that'll give him a first. I think so. Gossett wanted the punting yardage, but the offense will take the first down. Right. Offside, number 20 defense, lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, which is enough for a first down. Richie Anderson, who is uh, kind of on the uh, unfavored yeah. nation's yeah. list anyway for a, fourth, uh, for a fumble in the end zone last week. TNT's NFL coverage continues next summer. People moving early. Bring this one back. You know, Vern, the very beginning of this broadcast, we were talking about the Jets' mistake. The Jets have been beating the Jets this year. That's why they're one and three. Miss Q after Miss Q, it happened again on that special teams play. They had them in a punting situation, and they, uh, the penalty gives them a first down. Ball start before the snap, offensive right tackle, five yards, still first down. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned, uh, you know, we mentioned what happened uh, coming into today, where they ranked. And there's 30 teams in the league, and the last or nearly last in all these categories. And tonight's game, again, they've just made one mistake after another. Fumble Underline snap. point. Yeah. Here's the toss to Napoleon Kaufman. Watch out. Put him on the track team. Remember Mike White said, hey, what we're really hoping from Napoleon Kaufman is that in the fourth quarter, when people start to get tired, you bring in a Napoleon Kaufman who has explosive speed. You think this guy, not a little scat back, but can change the game in the fourth quarter this year. Out of California high schools, and then, of course, the University of Washington, the number one pick. Listed at 5'8", great speed. Glenn back in the lineup at left quarterback comes up to play tight. They toss it to Coffin. And he gains about three, but he looks dangerous in gaining those three, doesn't he? Yes, he does. You know, he's not a small guy either, Coffin. He is a guy that will stick it in the hole. And 
you know, so many of these uh, you guys, you, 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 and what did uh, Jim Fossil say about him? He said he's kind of a, a cross between Glenn Milbourne at Denver, who he, whom he had, and Dave Meggett, whom he had when he was with the Giants. But he said he's faster than Meggett, and he's a lot stronger than Milbourne. Second down and eight. 37-10 with 320 to go, third quarter. Incomplete for Jet, Aaron Glenn, pretty good coverage. And weren't you surprised when talking about Aaron Glenn or, or uh, Richie Kotite was when he was talking about Aaron Glenn, saying he was the best corner he had ever seen, and he coached Eric Allen in uh, Philadelphia. And compared him to Eric Allen, he said, I don't mean any disrespect to Eric Allen, but this kid's better. Uh, Eric Allen's going to be angry. Mm -hmm. Aaron Glenn, out of Texas A&M, number one pick last year. Now, in years past, the last three years, they have forced the ball to Tim Brown on third down. Jet and Brown to the right side. This time, they hand off inside to Harvey Williams. just his feet and legs. His neck, his shoulders, his eyes, his hands, everything were moving. I mean, a third and eight, it's a real change of pace. A big block by Fenner again, number 34, right there, in terrific vision. And then, boy, he's got some change of direction speed. And these guys are, they're dangerous. 29-yard gain for Williams. He's got 80 yards on 15 carries now. And the Raiders are threatening again. Yeah, one thing, though, I think Mike White needs to be thinking about with two, about two minutes left in this third quarter, if they score again, I'm saying get your guys out of there, a lot of your guys, your mm -hmm. key guys. Get Hostetler out. I mean, um, I'd get some of the wide receivers out. Bring in old Vince. Vince oh, Evans. good. What are you saying? <laughs> Evans is cannon fodder? What is this? <laughs> huh? No, I'm not saying that at all. This is, hey, that's what the backup quarterbacks are supposed to do. <laughs> Go in and get, get it Your turn, while. Vince. <laughs> Your turn. Yo, Vince. <laughs> <laughs> hey, actually, yeah, I am. Yeah, I am saying this is your cannon fodder. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't cuss in this one up. Vince is going to love you for this. <laughs> Your former teammate. Yeah. That's Southern Cal. The first time I met Vince, or one of the first times I met Vince, believe it or not, this Roosevelt guy was... Roosevelt administration? He was, yeah, that's it. A sharp dresser, but he had shoes, this is no lie, right. that had goldfish in the heels. He had, nah. No, they, they had little water things in them. And, nah. and, and, and live goldfish in the heels of his shoes. <laughs> Where do you resole <laughs> shoes like that? I don't know, but, you know, he's, he's calmed down his... Uh, Back to what wine goes with halibut. <laughs> yeah. What goes with goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> now that I know. Ripple comes to mind. <laughs> Hostetler's dad. Uh, <laughs> Matt Brock gets the sack. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, when it's 37 to 10, your imagination gets stretched or broken. Oh, you know, for the Jets, boy. it's, it's going to be another ugly Monday. Yep. But give Matt Bra Brock and some guys on defense who don't quit. And there are guys like this in the league every week who are on uh, the inferior teams. They just keep playing hard and playing hard and playing hard. And Matt Brock did right there. Go forward for the extra point. I mean, the uh, field goal, it's up and good. And the score goes to 40 to 10. You know, for the Jets, as a he's wearing his number 99. <laughs> I love these guys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Came up from New Orleans. Oh, the guy blew it. He wanted to go incognito, yeah, and he yeah. took the took the they know now took the thing off while we while he was on camera. 76-yard drive in 13 plays. My kid, my kid, say send money. This kid saying send help. And Cole Ford to kick off. Dexter Carter and Ron Carpenter are the
to the 35-36 yard line. Hey, Vern, you know, say what you will about Vance Joseph and the kind of night that he has had. He is, uh, A, he was happy that this ball didn't get thrown. But B, after this play, a smile still comes on his face. And uh, I commend him for that, in spite of uh, a difficult evening. Saying, hey, I finally got you this time, Daryl. Been a tough one. First down and 10. Boomer Asias is still in the quarterback. Blitz coming. Flags are down. Pass incomplete. It was tipped. Boy, did I see a bunch of tip balls today? I mean, Steve Young had a bunch yeah. tipped. Uh, more and more prevalent. We saw some last week in Jacksonville. And I bet you I've seen five or six a game. That'll be a motion call against the Jets. Vince Evans loosening up the old limb. 16th year in the NFL. Only 36 starts in those 16 years. But Offense. Two men moving. Both not resetting. The Good. Long pass. touchdown pass to um, Darrell Hobbs a week ago. I think it was over 50 yards, 54 yards, I believe it was. He has always been a phenomenal, phenomenally strong and gifted player. In the league in uh, parts of three decades now. Mm -hmm. Second and ten. Gravette in motion. Esiason, Andre Bruce. Boy. Deal break. It's unfair. It's been unfair for Vance Joseph, and it's been unfair right now for Boomer Esiason. have a bunch of sacks tonight four on Esiason this evening and Andre Bruce number 99 is second of the evening as he powers through Hasselrig which is saying something when you're powering through Hasselrig Boomer has no chance and the clean up by Anthony Smith time has been called 40 to 10 end of three the start of the fourth and final quarter 40 to 10 the Oakland Raiders making their first visit here since they were the Los Angeles Raiders and made this visit in 1989 that was Art Shell's first game as the head coach technically this is the first time the Oakland Raiders have played in this facility last time they were here as the Oakland Raiders were 79 and the game was at Shea Stadium here's the Sinison dropped by Wilson at the 50 yard line you know, Boomer Siasen's an easy target in this city, but he's had about four or five passes that should have been caught that were dropped. And that was another one. And that was a third and forever, and they would have had a first down. Brian Hansen on the punt. Turn it. Fair catch made at the 19-yard line. And we have one of those ubiquitous pieces of yellow down. Vince Evans getting ready to come on, but first we've got Gordon McCarter wants a little air time This is the games you like to fast forward through the, the rest of the game for your head coach and just get get ready to for the next one. You know, it's there's not a lot of positives that Richie Kotite has uh, for his team after this one. And of course, the Jets have yet to score in the fourth quarter of any game this season. So, oh, thanks for all the hope. <laughs> <laughs> the ineligible downfield number 84 kicking team, five yard penalty, repeat fourth down. So they'll make the. Uh, track back and repunt. And you know, Vern, for, for Boomer Esiason, you know, a guy in his 12th year, you know, this was supposed to be a team when he came here three years ago that was on the rise. They are not. And to me, for a guy in his 12th year with maybe a few years left, I know it's his hometown, but he wants the most out of his football career, this is not the place for him. Well, and he said to us yesterday, I'm not ready for a broadcasting booth because uh, he'll be terrific at that when mm -hmm. it happens. Uh, but he said, nothing I've found can replace the thrill of the, the playing, what this feels like. 
But everybody wants to win a championship, and it's not going to happen, I think, in his career here. Right. He is in the last year of his contract here. Right. I think he's going to have to make a decision, and the Jets are going to have to make a decision about where he plays next year. It's going to be a tough one. The officiating crew marked the penalty in the wrong direction. So they've uh, <laughs> figured it out. Even Gordon's getting a little smile out of that one. And we're back to punt again. Brian Hansen. Kim Brown has moved up to the 35. Fair catch at the 35-yard line. Turn to the Meadowlands. Vince Evans will come on at quarterback. 1968, the date of the famous Heidi game. With 105 remaining in a game between the Jets and the Raiders in Oakland, NBC left the game to air the children's movie Heidi on the East Coast. What the viewers missed was an amazing comeback as Oakland scored two touchdowns in the last 42 seconds of the game. And they beat the New York Jets 43-32. However, the Jets came back and defeated Oakland that same year in the championship game and went on to take on Baltimore, won the Super Bowl, Super Bowl III. Might not be a bad programming idea. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to, uh, what is it? Police, Police Academy, Academy 3. III. Get that thing stoked up, guys. <laughs> Warm up the reels. We got 14.38 to go in this one. Vince Evans is the new quarterback. Hugh Douglas, number 99, made he the tackle. He is the on this uh, new one. old quarterback. Yes, I mean. that's right. You know, as nice as it is to see Vince uh, come in and play, you, you think, though, maybe Billy Joe Holford. I know he's the third team quarterback, and you, you, know, you have to order him one, two, and three. The young guy, they'd want to give some experience. They think Holford might be the guy of the future, but, but if Vince is in the game, and he played uh, well last week, long touchdown pass to Darrell Hobbs, and even though he's 40 years old, and Vince is, he can still play, and he has got a live, live arm. Ball comes in at fullback. He's the short back in front of Crawford. 40 to 10. Kaufman out to the 42-yard line. That'll bring up third down and five. James Jett hurries on. Oakland goes back home next week to take on Seattle. Then they're at Denver. Mike White said he is having more fun in his first year as an NFL head coach. He coached two different spots as a head coach in the collegiate ranks at California and at Illinois. Well, you know, he coached 37 years before he finally got his head coaching job at, uh, in the NFL as a head coach. Uh, he deserved it a lot sooner. Eric Ball. And that'll be fourth down. We're just finishing the thought up on Mike White. Uh, you know, this is basically the same Raider team a year ago that many people, myself included, picked to, to go and win the Super Bowl. And they were underperformers a year ago. He has got these guys playing at a very high level. And, you know, injuries play such a large part. Who knows what will happen with the injuries. But they, if they play like this and have guys healthy, they're as good as anybody. On fourth down, here's Jeff Gossett. That's a dandy punt. Dexter Carter at the 10. Carter gets it back to the 20-yard line. Carl Kidd, number 46, downfield to make the tackle. Time has been called. 12-32 remaining in this one. Four and one on the season. They have a 30-point lead with 12 and a half remaining in this one. And uh, we hear a lot about the, the successful teams over the last uh, two and a half decades. The 49ers, the Cowboys with their division titles. The Jets, of course, won that Super Bowl three, one of the most historic Super Bowl victories ever. But look down at the bottom. No division titles since then. That's one reason why Jet fans are referred to as long-suffering. Esiason gets rid of it, but then the ball is... Is it complete? Dropped. Dropped. Charles Wilson, the intended receiver. Well, we've got a, uh, an old Jet from those, the 1968 Super Bowl team. John Dockery. Working the game here for CBS Radio. He... Uh, he was a guy that uh, 
Remember, he said, I missed the Heidi game with an injury. Right. <laughs> and was reminding us that in Super Bowl three, he played both offense yeah. and defense. Yeah. The fourth leading receiver on the team that year. And the fifth defensive back. Here's Esiason. And LaFleur. And we told him before the game tonight that if this thing went south, he was going to get on camera. So a little FaceTime for the doc. Well, Brett Baxter, that guy right there, number 30, I think if if the Jets are going to have, you know, any kind of season this year, this is a guy that they have to find a, a bigger role for. Brad Baxter, you know, primarily has been a lead blocker for them, a, a pass protector, a good short yardage runner, but... Their long runs this year, I think, are not going to come from speed like the Raiders. They're going to come from broken tackles. And Brad Baxter can break some tackles. Second down and eight. Blitz coming. Esiason behind Corbett. And Brad Baxter picked up somebody there on that blitz. And Boomer's talking to Corbett. You know, Mix up on the route. Yeah, 40 to 10, I think you take Boomer Esiason out. He has nothing left to prove in his 12th season. He's going to take a shot to the legs. Robbins goes low. And, you know, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd bring somebody else in. I really would. Bobby Brister's their backup. Third and eight. And there's something about a quarterback wanting to finish what to start. But now he's going to 30. He goes deep right side. This one is caught and then dropped. Oh, yeah. And picked up. And here comes Mike Jones of the Oakland Raiders. Still running. Still running. Touchdown. Incredible. Well, Mike Jones was a running back in college. He is a converted linebacker. And John Fox, the defensive... John Fox, the defensive coordinator, was saying, hey, this guy's really come on. But let's go back to the reception by Wayne Trebet, number 80. This was a pretty good catch to begin it. You know, fights through some traffic, goes up and catches it, takes the hit, the strip there by the defensive back Mustafa, and then Mike Jones picks it up. And then there's a whole host of Raiders out there trying to trying to help him get along. Get the beaker, gives him a block, and then he does a lot. He, he remembered those days as a running back, didn't he? And the number of yardage, yards he traveled equals his jersey number. A 52-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Mike Jones. There's been far too much consolation going on on the jet bench tonight to ease any of the pain. 47 to 10, Oakland after the 52-yard fumble return for a TD from Mike Jones. Bobby Brister getting ready to come on. Backup quarterback. Last year in Philadelphia. And prior to that, of course, in Pittsburgh. Ron Carpenter, Dexter Carter, a deep. Cole Ford's kick taken by Dexter Carter. two-yard line. Tackle is made by Bruce Pickens, number 39. Well, three turnovers tonight for Richie Kotite and the New York Jets. NFL leaders in takeaways. Yeah. Raiders, 15, scored two touchdowns on turnovers last week, one tonight, and then the giveaways. Jets, 17. The Steelers lead the pack at 18. Steelers uh, only had one today. But the Jets' defense has now scored what, three touchdowns this season thus far. One tonight, two last week. Boomer Esiason for the night, 15 of 30, 171. Sacked four times, one fumble. Brad Baxter up the handoff. And he gets it out to the 47-yard line near that uh, logo in the middle of the field. You know, I've been coming here, I, I, the first year I think was 76. And see the logo in the yes. New, New Jersey map? Here's tonight's mm -hmm. trivia question. This is fourth quarter material. Mm -hmm. Trivia question. What do the four stars stand for in the map of New Jersey? Huh? San Luis Obispo. Well, that was the answer last week's No, that was Cal <laughs> Poly Pomona. Oh, that's right. Hey, Cal I, I'll Poly give you a little, little time to think about this. You can do any research you want. Four stars. What do they represent? I do have the answer. 
pass is incomplete. Ask me a bunch of questions you don't know the answer to. I have in my hand here the amazing Preskin. Okay. You ready for this? See that star at the top? Yes. You gotta circle that. See that yeah. guy right there? Yep. That is the Meadowlands Complex at East Rutherford, New that, Jersey. That right one, there. That, that one right that there. One right okay. There. okay yeah. Number two? Right yep. here. Yep. Number what's, two? Yeah, what's that one? That is the Monmouth Park Racetrack. Ooh, that you was, know that? I was guessing that was the third star. We're going to save the third and fourth okay. for the next play. There you go. Oh, you're useful. Two down, two to go. Can I borrow you for my Christmas uh, party? Always I'm on your tip list. Third down into the flat. Morell. Out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Well, okay, I'm on, on the edge conference. of my seat. Okay, here we go. You ready? Now, yep. this is number three. Yep. Right. We got bodies right. in the way. There, there. Oh, no, 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 no. Yep. Come on, fellas. Good there boy. we go. There, Number right. three, right there. Uh-huh. That's the aquarium. Okay. All right. That's my, one of my favorite spots. Aquarium in Camden. Boy, a bunch of guys squishing some fish there. Yeah. yeah, yeah look yeah. at that. They got goldfish in their shoes. <laughs> Number four, right yep. there. Huh? Okay. Number What's four. That? That's the convention hall in Atlantic City. Well, now, tell me now why they're start. I have the answer to that, too. <laughs> hey, I am a full-service bank. Nice punt. Nice bounce. Down at the two. And we have a flag down there near the aquarium. Now, I'm really impressed that you knew those four, but, but I'm really going to be impressed if you can tell me why they have those there. As soon as we give Gordon McCarter okay. some air time, I'll yeah. let you know. Must be a long answer. No, I don't want to disrupt it. There we go. Mm -hmm. The four stars. Here to four unknown stars. Certainly by me. During the trip, the penalty will be enforced from the spot where the reception change. First down. Oakland leading at 47-10, and they are backed up at their own one-yard line. Now that we've informed you about the stars in the New Jersey map, I'm thinking back, a friend of, of mine whom you know, long-standing, Joe Cash, back in mm -hmm. Dallas. Joe worked with me doing NFL games for years. He kept trying to get me to get that on the air. Really? And Patrick yeah, proud of you. finally did it. Yeah. I hope it's the last time, Vern. I thought it was scintillating. I hope it's the last time we have time for it. But then I have a very boring life. <laughs> I don't no know doubt. guys who wear goldfish in their heels. <laughs> well, there's the guy. He's playing quarterback right now. First down and ten. That's a true story. for bringing it up. <laughs> and they move the ball out. Napoleon McCallum does, or Napoleon, nope, Napoleon Kaufman. There you go. Thank you. Now to the seven-yard line. Well, he is a strong player, a finisher. You know, the thing about Napoleon Kaufman, if, if they can get him going in the passing game, I think he really is going to be a threat. It's Robert Jenkins. Robert Jenkins, yeah. the left tackle. Remember, they have lost two offensive linemen already. Don Mosbar, perhaps a career-threatening injury to his eye. He's had four operations on it, hurt in training camp. And then they lost Gerald Perry, their left tackle, who should be back this year. But uh, they, they give Joe Bugle even more credit. This is a team that's going to go to 4-1 and one now with two very good offensive linemen, perhaps their two best that have been out most of the year. Nolan Harrison, the defensive end, is also out. Oh, wow, that's kind of Hey, neat. that is good. <laughs> Jeff Gossett. You never know <laughs> when you got to empty the bucket. You. Good for you. Oh, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Robert Jenkins. Nine and a half to go in this marathon. And Jenkins will get uh, some medical attention on the bench. <laughs> Coffin moves it out to the 10-yard line. Hey, I think congratulations are in order to our erstwhile audio man, Victor Victoria, up here. He and his uh, beautiful wife celebrated the birth of Rachel Marissa Victoria. This past week, he just uh, handed me It's a Girl candy cane. Mm -hmm. You see the ingredients in this thing? It says pure sugar, cream of tartar, certified food coloring, and oil of peppermint. Thanks for looking after my health, Victor. I appreciate that. But congratulations. <laughs> congratulations, Vic. 
nice ingredient, huh? Oil of tartar, cream of tartar. We can't get away from fish tonight, can we? Here's Coffin. Out to the 16-yard line. I think I'm more concerned that you were looking at that than yeah, anything well. else. And Napoleon Kaufman, a little slow getting up. Oh, he is, uh, he's a dandy back. Well, again, he's, he's their alternate back, not that third down back, and he can dart, and, and he's got great vision. I mean, he sees things, sees things, and then he has some strength to finish off the run. Makes a couple of good cu cuts, but it ended with power. Harvey Williams comes on, Kaufman limping a little bit as he comes to the bench. And here's Harvey Williams out uh, near the 28-yard line. Ron Carpenter, number 26, makes the tackle. Harvey Williams nearing a 100-yard night. Well, look at that. This is what the Jet defense has given up in, in rushing. Uh, and it started with 114 with the Dolphins, and it's got progressively worse, 172 yards. That's a testament to Joe Bugle and that offensive line, and obviously a very big lead. First down and 10, back to the eye. Coffin. Oh, what a run. What a nifty move. Man. And what did, what did Mike White say? In the fourth quarter, which it is now, he's going to look even more explosive and faster because guys are tired. And again, this is an explosive mode. He has got suddenness about him. A 28-yard run that was designed to go off left tackle. Just kind of scoots, darts, ducks under some people, bounces off Kevin Gogan, and then steps out of bounds very casually and calmly. And for Kaufman now, 86 yards on six carries. Williams has 97 yards on 18, and Williams is back in the lineup. This one they catch for a loss at the 46-yard line. Lou Benfati, number 78. And another little skirmish breaks out. Kevin Gogan's a big guy to be arguing with. Mm -hmm. Gogan, who played uh, with the Cowboys for a number of years. For an in-depth look at today's NFL action, stay with us following the game for the Steel Pro Football. Five fifty away from that spot. Fumble. So indicated by the Jets, but not indicated by the officiating crew. Let's see, the Raiders don't have any turnovers tonight. Zero in a very efficient game. This is, this is the new Raiders, not... They didn't just leave uh, Los Angeles. They left a style of play about them. That style was a lot of penalties and mistakes. And, and the Joe Bugle and the rest of this uh, offensive staff have really done a nice job of putting together some guys. Basically the same guys they had a year ago. So we give Mike White and Joe Bugle and Jim Fossil and the rest of these guys a lot of credit because this is a much better team. Look like the... Raiders may have moved. Well, Steve Wisniewski was talking about Joe Bugle to us this week and said, you know, all stars before the snap. 88 offense, five yards, still third down. And Wisniewski was saying about Bugle, you know, he's, he didn't come from the old school. He come from the original school, way back. I mean, this guy, he says he's not interested in, in, in the money or anything. He, all he cares about is his guys, his offensive linemen. If you do things right, he's not afraid to come up and give you a big hug. I mean, he loves, loves the game. And loves the guys he coaches. Yeah. Third down. Here comes Eric Ball on the sweep to the left. Gogan is there to help provide a little bit of an escort. <laughs> and then uh, gets into a shouting match with Matt Brock. Uh, Rich Stevens, the, the tackle right there, was, was getting in a shouting match. And as you mentioned with Brock, and Brock was saying, hey, I knocked you down. And Rich Stevens just kind of pointed at the scoreboard, <laughs> which is always the best answer. Fourth down. Dexter Carter back. is 
way up in the air. I've never ever seen him kick it directionally. I mean, he is so good kicking the ball directionally, and they got a little different style kicking it down the middle, but... Mm. You know, Pat Swilling has been one of these guys we've talked about, his career reborn with the Raiders, and uh, he has had a very good evening. And it started in the first quarter when they tried to run a bootleg against him, and uh, he was not fooled. And then he had a, a different kind of move, a power move, right over the left tackle, Willard. And then in the run game, he was pretty tough as well. And it's it's the nose thing, I'm telling you. This nose thing really works. They may, have, they may have Tim Brown wearing it. Yeah, soon, I'm sure. Here comes Adrian Morrell around the right side, out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Jets, as we said, it doesn't get much easier. They've got to go to Buffalo mm. next week. Then they're at Carolina. Miami comes in here for a home game in three weeks. Then they travel to Indianapolis. Just not a very good team. No, no. And the Raiders are. I mean, we, we saw Dallas uh, against Minnesota. They, they were up, but, but that, between Dallas and Oakland, the two best teams we have seen this year. Right. Bobby Brister, the quarterback. The handoff goes to Morrell. And he cuts back to his right. That's Adrian Morrell's 14th carry for 89 yards. You know, the Raiders were the last AFC team to win a Super Bowl in 1983. And Jim Plunkett was the quarterback of, uh, of that Raider team. And now an announcer for uh, Raider broadcast. There he is. Okay, we've got to put the headsets on there, though, Jim. Jim, this you're, is you, Jim you're on yeah. the air. Yeah. Jim. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> there he goes. Now he knows he's on. There he goes. <laughs> but boy, was he a player. Uh, Talk about a guy getting his career resurrected by the Raiders. Yes. Remember? I mean, he was beaten up so badly with the Patriots. Kind of, kind of uh, his career was virtually over. The Raiders pick him up, and then one season he didn't play one down for the Raiders. They put him on the bench and let him kind of recover. The next year he led him to uh, his first of two Super Bowls. So he, uh, he had a terrific career both at Stanford and uh, certainly with the Raiders. Former Heisman Trophy winner for the then Indians. That's now the Cardinal. See? Yeah, you got a full bucket. Hey, babe. Just in case you needed it. I'm, just, I'm worried about Jim not having that headset that on. on yeah. yeah. He's working with Joel Myers over there. And Joel's, Joel's carrying the load here. 47 to 10. Yep. And Joel doesn't know what those stars represent. <laughs> I'm glad I do now. <laughs> 250 to go in this one. Raiders have some good young linebackers. That time it was James Folston, number 55. You're looking at Aaron Wallace, number 51. Holston's had a couple of nice plays. Had a sack of Esiason, or a, certainly a big hit on him. There's Holmberg. Good team with depth. And in this uh, marathon of an NFL season, you need some depth. They have it in the defensive line. They certainly have it at linebacker. Third and 11. Mister almost picked off by Holmberg. It'll be fourth down. Brian Hansen comes on to punt. I'm not sure where Richie goes with this team, Vern. I mean, I, I really don't know what you can do when you don't have a game breaker. I mean, they're going to maybe have a trading deadlines coming up. Somebody, somebody's, I think they're going to need somebody in the white season. Right. Get the game open. Hansen's punt over Tim Brown. And that will go into the end zone, touch back, and come out to the 20-yard line. As we near the two-minute warning, we've got 2.05 remaining in this one. Well, we stay back east a week from mm -hmm. tonight. We'll How be about this AFC West? This is a competitive division, and every se team seems to have a nemesis. You know, the Raiders can't beat Kansas City. Kansas City, I think, has a tough time with Denver. Denver, there it is. I knew it was coming. I knew there. you were going somewhere with that. I knew it was going to happen. Look at that. Chargers have won the Ch uh, 9 of 11 against the Chiefs. But, uh, boy, they, they really go after one another. 
Here comes Kaufman out across the 20 near the 23 yard line and we have reached the two minute warning. Only 120 seconds left in this one. 47 to 10. Assembled with the Raiders and he was talking about Joe Bugle, the former coach of the uh, Arizona Cardinals, longtime assistant coach with the Redskins, Bishop Harris. It is a good staff. Floyd Peters. Yeah, yeah they've done a real nice job. John Fox, they got a good mixture of uh, young coaches like John Fox, their defensive coordinator, Jim Fossil, the coaches of quarterbacks, and the guys have been around the league a long, long time. Joe Bugle and his wife, Brenda, two of the more refreshing people you'll meet in this league. Their three daughters have now moved back to the uh, Phoenix area, all still living there where Joe was employed for a while as head coach of the Here's Kaufman. And Napoleon Kaufman is also nearing the 100-yard mark. Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't blame you, pal. Now, Don't I remember 25 years ago when ABC <laughs> took a shot during an Oakland-Houston guy game of a guy like they this in the surprise, afternoon, right? and they got a surprise. Yeah, the guy woke one. up. Yeah, we're number one. And, yeah. uh, yes, he indicated his... Uh, Team was his, number one. Yeah. Uh, Meredith caught that one. <laughs> 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 and the, the trouble is that guy's flight leaves in an hour. Oh. One twenty to go. Two hundred and sixteen yards Oof. rushing tonight for the Oakland Raiders. Well, I'll tell you, AFC, watch out for these Raiders. Uh, so much of it depends upon the health of your quarterback in particular, uh, and everybody has that same risk. But this is a team that can go all the way. Executive producer of Turner Sports, Mike Pearl. The NFL on TNT is produced by Peter Lasser and directed by Lonnie Dale. Pro Football Tonight, produced by Tim Kiley, and the coordinating director is Larry Cam. Our host producer, Ken Nolan, replay producer, Jeff Benke, technical director, Dennis Stone, the associate directors, Gary Nicholas and Joe Vencius, the senior unit managers, Stephanie Bradley, the graphics, Ted Ballard and C.J. Batita, the spotter, Nancy Lundquist, and the stats, David Yagi. Shannon Mizell, world's greatest stage. You manager. got it. Mike White and the Oakland Raiders, 47 to 10. They win this one. That makes that five and a half hour trip back west mm. much more palatable. He's going to enjoy that Chardonnay. <laughs> well, he's going to have some Pinot Grigio. <laughs> Tim Brown, the player of the game, nine receptions, 156 yards. He is our Cadillac player of the game with an average of 17.3, two touchdowns and a couple of punt returns that were also significant. 47 to 10. Maybe a little Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs>